All of the content in this video is protected by the Copyright Act of 1976. The intention of this video is to report and criticize the posts, videos, and content posted by Tila Tequila, of which may be perceived as shocking and insensitive, but it is necessary to discuss for educational and documentary purposes. Hey, what up y'all? It's your girl Tila Tequila. My brain is rewired in such a way where it's not like everyone else's. By the way, we are actually inside of a huge spaceship. I wanted to baptize these children for uh, God's kingdom and they said yes, but the grandma came over here and told them they cannot be baptized. I love all, you, all of you with all my heart. So why don't you shut the f up? So the gods, I, I know this because I am in Mount Olympus where the gods are. This homeless man was like bowing to me earlier. <laughs> with your stupid, ugly dresses, just stop, just die. And sometimes if she'd be like, your couch, nigga. The f***ing Zionist, you know, um, I'm gonna explode this car. <laughs> this is the deranged, bizarre, and horrifying downfall of Tila Tequila. Trust me, you're gonna need some water for this one. Tila Tequila is an Asian American model, TV personality, and basically the first social media influencer who was raised in Houston, Texas. Her family fled from Vietnam when she was just one years old via boat, and when they got to the States, Times were tough, living on welfare and food stamps. She was popular as a young girl, but constantly getting in trouble. She liked hanging out with the bad kids, and her parents could not prevent her rebellious tendencies. Tila longed for independence to escape the life she was living. She was passionate about poetry, writing, music, and the entertainment industry in general. In 1999, she went to community college for one semester, realized it wasn't for her, and dropped out. Beyond Betty Jean was the name of her first band that she started via a Craigslist ad in 2001. Her bandmates claimed that she wasn't a big partier, so why the name Tila Tequila? Well, she was using the name Tila Nguang at the time. It would change to Tila Tequila because of her apparent allergy to alcohol. The name was supposed to be ironic. At age 19, while walking through the mall, she got scouted by a Playboy modeling talent agent and asked her if she wanted to pursue a career. Very quickly, she was on the covers of various men's magazines and doing interviews. I went up to a guy, told him how hot he was, and licked his ear. What do you like to do for fun? Have sex, sex, and more sex. What is your ideal night out? My girls and I being bad and acting very wild. Have you ever had a girlfriend before? Yes, quite a few. What's the wildest thing you've ever done? I made out with two girls at once. As you can see, Tila was very open with her sexuality, which in 2002 was rare. Maybe not for a Playboy model, but for any person of influence for sure. This led to a lot of men romanticizing and fetishizing her, which would get out of control. She was always looking to the internet to advance her career. Tila was truly a visionary. She started her own website called Tila's Hotspot in 2001, which was a subscription-based site where you could chat with her and get exclusive content for $12.95 per month. The same exact business model as OnlyFans, which is dominating 20 years later. She would go even deeper though, posting photos of her friends, posting photos of her fans, bands that she liked, random blog entries. You really got to know who she was. She was internet famous. In 2003, Tila was getting kicked off the social media Media site Friendster constantly for her inappropriate photos. So Tom from MySpace emailed her and said that she would be welcomed with open arms on their site. This decision would change her career and internet history forever. They continue to block me out and uh, do whatever they can to discredit me, to make me disappear because they know they can't just point blank assassinate me. Because Tila's real passion was music. Modeling was just a stepping stone to gain a fan base and get money. MySpace was the best of both worlds. It was a social media website where you could connect with friends, build a profile, post pictures and blog entries, but they also doubled as a music streaming website. Musical artists would upload their songs to MySpace where users could listen to them. And then the listeners could add the songs to their own profile, which would start playing as soon as somebody landed on their page. It was so cool. I loved MySpace. Tila marketed herself differently online. She wasn't like those other girls. She would actually respond to you. While that may be true, I think most of that was to get people over to her own website to purchase subscriptions. However, Tila shared so much of her life in lengthy posts that her fans felt like they understood her. She was like an open book. There was nothing she wouldn't talk about. And at the time, she was pretty unproblematic. Just the fact that she was open and transparent to the world, physically and emotionally, made her seem controversial. But if she was popular in 2022, she would blend in with a lot of other influencers. There was one little footnote all the way at the bottom of her MySpace page that would kind of let us know how this was all gonna end up. You probably won't even be able to read this because my page is so cluttered. I am very high strung and suffer from multiple personalities. Jane, she's crazy. 
and she always wants to kill me. Tila, poor girl. She works so hard and always wants to make others happy. She deserves a break. I do a lot of things that are self-destructive. Is there a problem? And I walked over there about to crush his skull. Tila was the most famous person on MySpace in 2006. She racked up 1.7 million friends, which led to her topping the MySpace music charts. But MySpace had a critical flaw in its algorithm. Everyone had music on their profiles that played automatically when you landed on their page. Even if they paused the song after a couple seconds, it still counted as a stream. So Tila put her own music on her page. Since she got the most page views from her lewd photos, her music was getting pushed up in the music charts. Not because people are actually listening to the songs. At one point, Tila was number one on MySpace Music with 31.5 million views on her page. Fall Out Boy was number two with nine million. She was dominating, but she would get a big reality check when she released her first single on iTunes ever called I Love You. I want to become first person in history ever to be the first unsigned artist to land on the top 20 billboard charts. Hell, even make number one. 1. 1.7 million friends. If 10% purchased the song for $1, she could easily hit number one. However, she only sold 13,000 first week. Still great for an independent artist, but really showed how small of her following cared for her music. Sadly, this was the most successful music release she would ever have. The rest of her music career was a commercial failure. However, her internet-based business strategies with subscriptions to her photo catalog, combined with independent music releases and merchandise marketed towards her millions of followers, Tila was on her internet influencer entrepreneur grind before everyone else. She never hit the Billboard Hot 100, her music sucked, and we really don't know how much money she made through all these ventures. If she ended up making millions and hitting the Forbes list in 2006, we would be calling her a visionary today. Soldier Boy wouldn't be getting as much credit. Her career would take another major turn. In 2007, she landed her very own reality TV show on MTV called A Shot at Love with Tila Tequila. The concept was just a little different than your run-of-the-mill bachelor reality show. Tila was bisexual, so there were 16 men and 16 women competing for A Shot at Love with little old Tila. And on top of that, they didn't know about her sexuality. The guys thought she was straight and the girls thought she was lesbian. When she did the grand reveal, everyone lost their shit. The show then turns into guys thinking they have a shot with Tila, plus all the other women, and the girls being disgusted and annoyed with the guy's ignorant behavior. All of a sudden, I'm going for it. I'm climbing the wall like Romeo and Juliet. Tila! Tila! Testosterone men. Then the group finds out they won't have their own rooms and they will be sharing one massive bed, which leads to hookups and drama. They have challenges where the guys have to act like women and the women have to act like men. Tila eliminates contestants, an even number of guys and girls every time, when she doesn't feel she has a connection with them anymore. At the end, Tila got down to a man, Bobby, and a woman, Danny. The whole season highlighted how much of a connection Tila and Danny had. She was unproblematic, sweet, and became a fan favorite. However, Tila chose Bobby. Even after she chose Bobby, she ran off after Danny in such a way that had fans scratching their heads. At the time, the show had mixed reviews. Some people thought it was nice to see bisexual representation in mainstream media. Some thought it was a bad representation of the LGBTQ community. And others hated the entirety of the show. It was popular nonetheless, and got picked up for season two. Wait, season two? How? Because it was fake, Fox News wrote an article about how Tila had a boyfriend the entire time while filming the show, claiming that Tila wasn't even bi and the whole thing was just a scripted cash grab. Tila admitted the allegations were true in 2018 and that she was just gay for pay. However, at the time in 2007, she denied it all. She just said things didn't work out between her and Bobby and moved on with season two just a couple months later. Season two was basically the exact same thing all over again, but in the end, she chose a girl, Christy, but Christy actually denied her. After MTV, Tila was more than internet famous. She was getting movie parts, music video parts, and became a well-known celebrity. She released a book, Hooking Up With Tila Tequila, a guide to love, fame, happiness, success, and being the life of the party, which was actually well-received. She did not abandon her internet roots though. She stayed active on her websites and MySpace page, continuously building her die-hard fan base. Unfortunately, getting more famous didn't help. One year after MTV would be the start of a very long, twisted, and shocking downward spiral. Anyways, listen bro, 
So what was I finna say? Oh yeah, so what was I saying? In September 2009, Tila called the police on her boyfriend, Sean Merriman, linebacker for the San Diego Chargers, alleging that he choked, assaulted, and restrained her. Apparently, the 4'11 actress was able to hold off the 6'4", 260-pound linebacker long enough for the cops to arrive. He was taken into custody and made national headlines. When Tequila refused and wanted to leave Merriman's home, she says Sean became violent. He tackled me down to the, the couch, just like how he tackles those football guys. Then she claims Merriman choked her. Then I couldn't breathe. Sean said that Tila had been drinking too much and he was simply trying to make sure she wouldn't drive home drunk and that he wasn't assaulting her. Tila has been very public about her allergy to alcohol. However, there are countless examples of her posting about being drunk and drinking alcohol in pictures, making people think that she is either lying or drinks anyway, despite being allergic. A few days after the arrest, all the charges were dropped due to insufficient evidence of any crime being committed. However, Tila filed a lawsuit two months later for domestic violence, in which Sean countersued, not for defamation, but for copyright infringement and interference with a contract. Tila was using his Lights Out logo on her website, as well as intentionally interfering with a t-shirt deal he was working on with Walmart. The situation is strange, but they settled in court for an undisclosed amount. As dark descends into my world, I drown at night, without a fight. One last breath before I go. Don't mourn me, world. I will be slow. The devil has hunted me down. They want to take my soul from this world because I have a secret. Profound. So I'm giving in. God forgive me for my sin. Tila was going through something deep. She was live streaming on her Ustream account, ranting about her personal life and even toying around with dangerous objects. Well, it wasn't her live streaming. It was Jane Cordovez, her alter ego, remember? Her other personality? Luckily, she found a new girlfriend, Casey Johnson the heiress to the multi-billion dollar corporation Johnson & Johnson. They went out on one date in December 2009 and got engaged. That escalated quickly. Casey Johnson is the daughter of Woody Johnson, worth $5.7 billion, owner of J&J, &J, owner of the Jets football franchise, and United States ambassador to the United Kingdom. They struggled to maintain a healthy relationship their whole lives. Casey got everything she wanted as a child, besides a true connection with her father. She was rebellious, spoiled, and constantly getting into tabloid drama. As a young girl, she was diagnosed with borderline personality disorder. I guess her and Tila could relate on that front. Plus, she had been suffering from diabetes since age eight. Right before she met Tila, her life was at a low point. Her father had totally cut her out of the family. No communication and no more trust fund. She was struggling to pay her bills. Her Porsche got repossessed. She was evicted and now living in a friend's guest house. Her and Tila vicariously met through tabloids, since they were both hot topics. They also dated the same woman, Courtney Semmel, who was the heiress of the Yahoo CEO. CEO, Terry Semmel. Apparently Casey just showed up to Tila's house one day. She came over like a train wreck. I had to tell her, Casey, calm down, breathe. It's not the end of the world. I fixed her hair a little bit, we started playing dress up, and then next thing you know, we got engaged. Sounds insane, right? Well, they appeared on a red carpet just a few days later, kissing, and Tila wearing a 17 carat diamond engagement ring. Okay, the ring was fake. Courtney proved that Casey gave her the same exact ring when they were dating. The couple immediately moved in together. Yes, this is all within one week. Just 20 days later, they got into an argument. Casey left the house and returned to her previous living situation. On January 4th, she was found dead. She was in her guest house for four days before anyone found her. RIP my angel, Casey Johnson. You will forever be in my heart. I love you so, so much, and we will marry when I see you in heaven. There was no suspect of foul play. Her passing was due to her diabetes complications. She was not taking her insulin and not eating a proper diet, as well as taking NyQuil to sleep. This tragic passing could be the point where Tila never truly recovered. From here, her life would get extremely out of control. She became famous for her Twitter rants, most of these are now deleted, threatening to expose information, random bits about her life, and even fake pregnancies. Just a few days after her wife passed, I'm 13 weeks pregnant, I just want to rest for my baby. So please, I ask you nicely to just leave me alone so the safety of my baby. Tila has faked so many pregnancies over the years it's not even worth going into, but she would eventually have a child. Well, we think so. She was trying to keep her business life together landing a little skit on Robot Chicken. Tia, are you really bisexual? Because I get the feeling I never had a chance. Oh, I am very bisexual, Diane. And The Cleveland Show. She even had a new record out called I Love My DJ. And I put it, put him on and run, no protection. And he love it when I get on top. 
I can't believe they let her perform that on morning television. For some reason, she got booked to do a live performance at the Gathering of the Juggalos, where she was booed off stage and had rocks and glass thrown at her while performing. While I think the response was unnecessarily violent, whoever thought Tila opening for Insane Clown Posse was a good idea needs to rethink their career. In her downtime between bigger gigs, she started a gossip blog called MissTilaOhMyGod.com, where she spent her days gossiping, making lies, and saying extremely hateful things about other celebrities. But when she wasn't trying to make headlines about other celebs, she did everything she could to make headlines with her own stunts. Most reality stars and tabloid queens in the Paris Hilton Kim K era were only as valuable as the drama they created. Tila knew this. She knew she had to keep people's attention because her acting and music career just wasn't doing it. Think you know me, you think you have me all down, you think me, me you, you know, analyze me, but I'm always, and I will always be one step ahead of everybody else of what you think of me. I will let you think what you think of me. Here's an extremely summarized run of attention stunts from 2010 to 2012, threatening her own permanent demise via Twitter. I'm going to keep live on an internet broadcast so the world can watch it go down. And to all who has wished death upon me or made it a laughing matter, will be going to hell because I will be. Go ahead and start placing bets now. Will I do it or won't I? Place your bets. She didn't do it. Her alter ego, Jane, attacking her arm, establishing her fans, the hashtag Tila Army, as a cult or a religion. Is Tila Army a cult? Indeed we are. A cult that fights the war to restore peace and harmony and expose the others and the devil. We are family. The Tila Army is a religion. We are the light in this world filling with darkness and the devil. World is ending. Wake up, people. I don't sleep. Tweeting step by step the process of her having sex with someone who was asleep. I don't think I'm going to read that, so you can pause the video and read it if you want, but it's pretty, yeah, it's pretty bad. Lying about buying a $300,000 Lamborghini when it was proven to be a rental after she was pulled over while driving it. Starting a fake charity called Jaden's Angels. Lying about living in a mansion when she was living in a regular ass apartment. Claimed Ellen DeGeneres came out as lesbian because of Tila. Lied about another pregnancy this time, but with twins. Trust me, I'm leaving out so many other stories. Every day, there was a new lie, a new story, a new ridiculous thing that really nobody believed. Everyone knows that you know bitches are very jealous over me there are multiple blogs with extensive screenshots and detailed timelines dedicated to tila's lies she was doing anything and everything for attention chasing the viral high that she was basking in in her myspace days and this is before she became an extremist she converted to Judaism. I just feel like Jewish people have such a beautiful way about them, and I can't wait to officially be Jewish. Shabbat Shalom. Tila had never really opened up about religion before, so it seemed to be a bit random, but hey, good for her. While her scandalous lifestyle, tattoos, and compulsive lying don't really align with Jewish beliefs, maybe it was time she was going to change. Tila landed an episode on New York Inc., which was a reality show about a tattoo shop. A lot of the time, celebrities went on there, got tattoos, and talked about what it meant to them. Tila on the show seemed level-headed and positive. Casual fans thought, oh, she must be doing well. This show was one of the last gigs she would ever get in Hollywood. Her relevance was drying up. Tila overdosed. In March of 2012, she was still in a deep depression because of her massive ups and downs. She was suffering from a brain aneurysm in the middle of the night. The ballooning of the blood cells in the brain can lead to irrational thinking. While freaking out, she took a bunch of prescription pills and started overdosing. We don't know what those pills are, but a lot of people think that it was Ambien. I don't have a, I don't see Have you ever taken that? Ambien in your life? Who hasn't? Luckily, she made it to the hospital, but may have suffered permanent brain damage. As a result of this, Tila decided to check herself into a Florida rehab to get clean. After one month, she checked out, claiming to feel reborn as a whole new person. What we didn't know is this whole new person may be worse than the one before. Tila blamed her aneurysm on the Illuminati. Yes, they were punishing her for exposing the truth. Tila has this insane infatuation with the Illuminati. Honestly, 2012 YouTube in general loved to talk about Illuminati symbolism in music videos, pop culture, branding. 16-year-old conspiracy theorists were drawing red circles around Coca-Cola logos to show you the dark meaning behind everything you love. This wasn't the first time she talked about higher uppers and knowing the truth about the world. She once even tried to make a deal with the Illuminati via this blog post. If anything, I have all the right people you need that you want that you work oh so hard to get to. Yes, I have them at the tip of my fingers, all by my little self. Captivating and enchanting people and luring them in is quite easy for me. But now in mid-2012, she was committed to exposing the truth. The more you support me, the more I'm able to speak out for you and expose more truths to you. The point is, they start to, and again, they're getting paid by the government. They're, they are part of the CIA. They have their drones. 
So anyone who merely disagreed with her was just a hater or the government trying to silence her. That the media or other people were making her look bad because she was trying to expose the truth. Obviously, all the negative backlash she got was brought upon herself. People weren't just attacking her for no reason, but some of her small cult fan base believes her still to this day. There will be comments on this video saying she's telling the truth. Tila names satanic bloodlines and rituals. Part one, steps to ascension and being superhuman. Rebirth of a nation, 2013 political movement. Behind the veil, false flags, economic collapse. Plans for World War III and Zionist movement. The Teela Truth movement was in full effect. She was telling her 100,000 subscribers about rituals and policies that the U.S. government needs to implement to create a stronger nation. I wanted to run over very quickly uh, to you guys about, you know, how I've been really exposing lately how I'm actually Taylor Swift, where I created her and... One of her newfound beliefs was in human depopulation. Fair warning, this is where things are about to get extremely offensive and ignorant. I'll also be censoring a lot for obvious reasons. I once used to be against the government's agenda for human depopulation, but I'm no longer against that. Majority of the people in this world are cruel, ignorant, and have absolutely nothing positive within themselves. So basically all they're doing is taking up space, killing the planet, consuming more than they need. That's why we have massive hormones and pesticides and mass animal murder just to feed a bunch of lazy, negative, hateful, lard asses who don't do shit for society. It wouldn't be long after where she starts sympathizing with the infamous German dictator. In December of 2013, she posted this photoshopped image of her as Hitila standing in front of Auschwitz wearing the red band on her arm, saying the dictator was a good man. America is failing at the moment, yet I do not see anyone in office that is brave enough to save the American people like Hitler was willing to save the German people. I never said I hated anyone, but just because I feel sympathy, compassion, and forgiveness for others, such as Hitler, means I am now a monster? All for trying to open your eyes to the truth that Hitler was not as bad as he was painted out to be? These posts have obviously been deleted, but she wasn't kicked off social media. Also, didn't she convert to Judaism? What happened to that? She did a full 180 into an anti-Semite? Unfortunately, it got worse. Tila had a baby. Pretty sure this time she actually did. She had a considerable amount of proof. The father is Thomas Paxton Whitaker. He isn't famous. He's probably also insane though. When the baby was just one years old, she posted this picture with the hashtag baby Hitler. Isabella, what in the holy? One day you're gonna grow up and you're gonna have to apologize for this picture. I don't have the words for this level of ignorance or somebody that would do that to a child. She somehow managed to get another Hollywood gig on the show Celebrity Big Brother in 2015, but thankfully was kicked off due to these anti-Semitic posts. It was only then did she apologize. Well, it wasn't an apology. It was her yet again wanting sympathy and not taking responsibility for her actions. Back in 2013, I made a statement about Hitler not being a bad person and immediately realized soon after that I made a terrible mistake. During that time, I'd been suffering from severe depression and drug addiction for many years prior to that. I also attempted to in 2012 and overdosed on prescription pills. I wanted to die. I felt worthless and unloved as the pain continued to grow, causing me to further spiral out of control. There was no apology there. Not even a year after this apology, Tila is seen at a white nationalist convention doing the hateful salute. Her verified Twitter account also read, Alt Queen, literally, it took all the way until this point in 2016 for her to get deleted from Twitter for hate speech. Her career was obviously in shambles. Tila used to have the safe space of her own website to spread hate, lies, and conspiracy. After 2016, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram are definitely the main ways most people are getting information online. She needed to follow their rules. But this only made her believe her own bullshit even more, thinking that she is being censored for telling the truth when it is the exact opposite. From 2016 and still to this day, she's constantly making new social media accounts under various names and trying to avoid being deleted. She started a GoFundMe for new house furniture. She became a flat earther for a while because that was trendy. She faked another pregnancy in 2018. She made her way back on YouTube in 2019 as Tornado Theon. This time, she was spreading the good word of Jesus Christ. At this point, she's done so much damage, I do not think that any of you can be convinced that she has changed or has good intentions. I know I can't. She has been consistent with this new godly behavior up until today, despite getting deleted every few months for justified reasons. Mostly an unhinged amount of racism that I just, I, I don't even want to amplify it. I just don't want to put it in this video. She just makes a new account and somehow manages to get views, probably because she is getting support from a small community of Christians who don't know about her past or her own delusional cult fan base that follow her no matter where she goes. While there isn't anything wrong with praising your own religion or sharing your own ideals, it just can't be at the expense of others. Tila has always made it seem like she is the only person living the right way and that everyone else is wrong. 
On top of that, she's directly and indirectly spreading so much hate. How is that godly or pure? Let alone her insane claims of being an alien, being a goddess, being Jesus, being a four-dimensional cyborg, or whatever the fuck. She spreads hate and is very openly racist. Instead of taking responsibility when she says horrific things, she just says, oh, that was Lucifer speaking, or that was the devil. I was possessed, that's not me. I'm not big on censorship. I think it's destructive. But Tila has shown time and time again, for over a decade, that she cannot handle social media. She cannot stop spreading hate. She is a bad influence on people. She does not apologize, nor care about the people she hurts with her psychotic ideals. She does not deserve a platform, and we can only hope one day she decides to delete her social medias forever and get help.